What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video and in this one I'm going to be talking about the SPY, the NASDAQ, the QQQs and the futures, break down what the charts are telling us and what the data is suggesting and why tomorrow is going to be an absolutely massive day as Jerome Powell is going to be giving a speech. And before I break anything down about it, before I get into any more details about whether or not the market is going to continue with the rally or if it's going to make a big U-turn and start crashing, I do have to mention a couple of things before starting. Firstly, I'm not a financial planner. Make sure you take none of this as financial advice whatsoever. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire community as a whole. And the last thing is, if you guys can, please check out the Mumu link down below in the description. If you sign up for Mumu, the link down below and deposit 100 bucks into the account. You're guaranteed 5 free stocks plus free level 2 data with $0 in commission trading. So check it out before they run out. Off runs in just eight days. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. So Tesla's actually up about five, I'm sorry, uh 2.52 percent for the day outperforming the markets. And right now the market basically did the same thing, right? We're just dropping back and forth and back and forth, going sideways. This is Tesla right here. Uh, if you want to look at spy, very similar trend, just back and forth and back and forth. Pretty boring, not really much happening. And we do have a gap above right here. We also have a gap. Uh, I don't know if there's the gap below. I think we actually filled that one. But there is still space to come down either way. So the real question is, is the market going to break down? Is the market going to break out? We'll have to wait and see. But it's going to depend heavily on tomorrow because Jerome Powell is going to be speaking at 12.40 p.m. Eastern Time. When it's almost 1 p.m. Eastern Time, you have to be ready because what he says will affect how the entire market ends up moving. I also believe that technically, okay, I'm not guaranteeing he's going to say anything. I don't know what he's going to say. I, I don't know if he's going to pump the markets or cause the crash or anything like that. But I want to note that if I was the Fed speaker, it would be in my best interest to cause the market to come down. I say that because seeing a high market during a time like this could lead to more financial distress for individuals when we start to see the market crumble also for institutions because the crash would technically be bigger right the market wants to the, the fed wants the market to come down now so that the crash isn't as bad by the time it actually ends up happening i just want to note that so it's very important to remember powell speaking at almost one o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, be ready. After he's done speaking, we have more Fed speakers. On Wednesday through Friday, we have Fed speakers every single day. When they come out, be ready because they do tend to cause choppiness and also downside. Please be ready. We have initial jobless claims on Thursday. And then on Friday, we have CPI. No, I'm sorry, Tuesday, next Tuesday, we have CPI coming out on Valentine's Day. So we have so many big things coming out particularly the Fed with Jerome Powell speaking tomorrow is going to be the biggest thing. For earnings, we have Disney on Wednesday and Thursday we have PayPal. It's going to be very important. The rest of them are not as big in my opinion, except for like Honda or just a couple of them. But the majority of them are just not that huge. Just be ready for Disney and PayPal for Wednesday and Thursday. And when we, when we look at the charts, there is a divergence that's developing. And this does give me the impression that the market is forming a top. There's a, clearly a divergence that's being developed. We have the fear and greed index right here. As you guys can see, there's an uptrend right here. See how the peak from August is not as high as the peak right now. This has been on an uptrend. You could draw a line with a, a, a positive slope because of that. And then you could draw a line with a negative slope from right here when you look at the S&P 500's prices. What does this tell us? The fear and greed index is more greedy right now than it was in August, but the peak that the market has, the high of the market is actually quite lower than the peak from August, which means there's a divergence right here. And also you have to remember that Whenever we see the fear and greed index meet those extreme levels, the market tends to top. That's what happened right here. That's what happened right here. That's what happened here and here and here. And now it might happen right over here. So be ready, guys. The market's at extremes. Not typically the best place to be buying. But now let's break down what's happening to the trends. For tomorrow, I just want to note it's going to be very boring in the beginning. 
all right it's going to be super super boring i expect the market just trade sideways i think spy is just going to chop back and forth not really do much and we might make a big move maybe to the upside tomorrow to fill this gap up here but then that doesn't guarantee we're just going to keep pumping because on the daily time frame the macd is getting smaller we are kind of slowing down losing some momentum after the two flat indecision candles that we have but i want to break this down for you guys because right now there are two possibilities i'm seeing and i don't know which one is guaranteed to happen or if one of them is more likely to happen than the other i think that 418 may have been the top we have some evidence of that and then the market's going to start respecting a downtrend from here or or the market might form one last top get one last big push thanks to powell or something before we start to truly downtrend so it's very hard to predict i can't promise anything but i do know we have to be uh very careful for what it's about to do for tomorrow i predict the market's going to trade sideways until powell starts speaking okay so just expect it to be boring and shopping in the beginning then when powell starts speaking that's when i expect the market to either get a big pump up or we could see the market reverse and come down i also want to note some other important things Looking at Tesla, it, it was basically just flat throughout the day. We bounced between 190 and 198, and we didn't really do much. Let me pull up the hourly chart for Tesla. We have key resistance at 198 to 200. We have the major support. Technically, we have some support at 190, but the really strong support is between 182 to 180. Right now, I just think that Tesla is going to get a small pump up into open, maybe just go back and forth super boring uh, around this 195 level and if powell pumps the markets this bullish triangle could play out and tesla could break past 200 if not this thing could start coming down so please be ready for that i also want to note something else that's very important and that's the fact that when you look at spy all right we're we're in a very similar trend but we are kind of bouncing around this 490 i'm sorry 410 area Additionally, I want to add that for the QQQ or the triple Q, we have another very similar trend. The triple Q right over here is just trading sideways. Do we have a gap above? We also have a gap below. It could go either way. I mean, we're just stuck between two gaps. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a small pump up to fill this gap, but we end up just trading sideways. I don't know if 313 is the top or if we're going to form a new top, but either way, I do believe a topping process is here. Either this is the top or we're about to form one last top before the market comes down. Once again, it depends on Jerome Powell. Seeing the gaps down here, it looks to me like we might end up seeing downsides a little bit more likely. Finally, looking at Google, a similar trend. We have the gap that's still getting filled. It hasn't fully filled yet. We might push up a little bit and then continue with the sell-off. And I do think we are going to fill this gap relatively soon. I also want to note, and the gap is going to take us just to about 100. That's my target. Very similar to Amazon, right? I actually have a similar target. But on Amazon, I want to note, I'm anticipating Amazon to basically come back to 100 and try to hold it. It's going to be a fight to hold it. But if we break below it, there are... Uh, a lot of key areas below that zone i also want to note that on the daily chart if this thing does end up breaking down if we break below 100 then we have the 50 ema around this 96 level it's a very important level to watch but overall we're going to be seeing how this thing reacts to 100 looking at apple i want to note that apple actually is reacting very similar to the previous earnings nice pump up followed by a bit of a red day today Apple has a big gap down here. So are we going to come down for Apple? It's very possible, but I want everyone to be prepared nonetheless. For the QQQ, oh, I think I just talked about this. Obviously, I expected to trade kind of sideways, but we do have a gap below, so I'm going to be very careful. It's also correlated with Apple having the gap there. Microsoft, same thing. Uh, I do expect it to be choppy in the beginning, but we do have this gap. Likely, we could come down depending on Powell. Uh, what I want to note that's a bit of a red flag is the 10-year treasury yield this thing is having a breakout and broke above support it got a really nice bounce there but we have this gap right here so i'm thinking that we might see this thing come down a little bit to fill this gap if it does come down this will be bullish for the stock market maybe the market gets another pop another rally maybe a small one and then if this thing holds and gets a big bounce and starts like an uptrend after that the uptrend continues then we might see the market start to come down. That still is very 
very possible. So please be prepared and be ready for that. The last thing I want to talk about is the biggest red flag in this market, and that is the dollar index. The dollar is starting to break out. If this thing continues to break out, it's going to be bearish for the stock market. The whole market is going to likely start downtrending. And I want to note that right now, yes, we have a nice uptrend, but it might come down to retest this, this wedge right here before getting a continuation. Either we're going to do that or we're going to, going to just keep going. But I want to note that every time this thing breaks out, the market has already topped or it's about to top, right? One of those two, all right? At least historically. I want to note to you guys that this is how this thing has been moving, okay? We have these like falling wedges that develop and they tend to develop when the market is like in a very bullish state. Then we break out when the market's ready for reversals. So let me give you an example. Remember how the market was pumping back in March? What was the dollar doing? Back in March, the dollar went from being at 99, came all the way down to 97, traded sideways, but it came down a bit. Then it broke out. It got this breakout. That's when the market peaked and the market started coming down. Then we fast forward to like the time when the market crashed around May. This thing started coming down. The market started bouncing a little bit. Then it continued to go up going into June. Same thing. Now, I want to talk about uh, the falling wedge that developed in August. Remember this, guys? In August, the market was pumping. Remember when SPY was breaking out, AMC was breaking out? And then this thing actually ended up breaking out of its wedge that was forming. So right around here, the 17th or so. The next day, the stock market peaked. And then as the dollar broke out, the market crashed, right? Similar trends keep on developing. And then since then, since like October, the, this thing has been on a bit of a downtrend. Obviously, there are some nuances in it, but we've been in this giant falling wedge, okay? And what has the market been doing? The market's been pumping. We've seen the market pump and pump and pump. Now that this is breaking out of the falling wedge and starting to push out, if this thing starts pushing to these higher levels, it's bearish for the stock market. I can't stress that enough. It is very likely a reversal is coming. The last thing I'm going to be talking about uh, is Bed Bath & Beyond and AMC. This thing is obviously pushing up. We're very close to the 200 EMA, but I'd be very careful with Bed Bath & Beyond, guys. Even though I, I love to see this thing pump, I do think it has some more room. I want to be very careful because if the market reverses, this could likely slow down. For AMC, AMC has good news and bad news. The bad news about AMC is this is exactly what happened in August when the market pumped. And then when the market came down, obviously AMC came down too. AMC has these two gaps here. There's a gap here. There's another gap down here. But the good news is we have a very high cost to borrow, and I do believe she's going to keep going. So I, I don't know if AMC is about to make a crazy huge move and try to get to all-time highs, for example. I do think it's unlikely, but I think it's possible. But I think the most likely thing is she's going to establish a top and maybe it's going to be close to the 200 EMA because during most of these rallies, AMC gets close to the 200 EMA, maybe breaks above it a little bit before we form our top. The 200 EMA is around $8, so I'm going to be watching $8 to $9. Finally, the last thing I wanted to say is the fact that when you look at AMC, there's a high cost to borrow. And when we get the high cost to borrow, a lot of those shares are just being eaten up. So like I said, I mean, in order for us to confirm whether or not this is the top, I just don't know. But I will say one thing, and that is I think she has a little bit more room to keep going. She should keep going, but do not expect her to break all-time highs. She might just be forming a top. So let me just show you guys something else that's interesting before I end this video. AMC could be doing something similar to this. I know a lot of people are letting the FOMO get to them, but please be careful. So on the left, I'm going to put the August chart, and on the right, I'm going to keep AMC's modern day chart. August is, where is it? Right here. Yeah, so the chart ended up getting uh, adjusted because of the, the creation of Ape. Look at what the setup looked like during the massive run-up in August, right? It looked a lot like this. Let me close the RSI and the MACD. So it's a little easier for you guys to see. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. All right. What you will notice is, and I'm not guaranteeing anything, but 
During the pump, we had this big rally. We came down, then we got another big pump. Then we broke above the 200 EMA on the daily. We actually broke it to some degree. Before we came down, then we formed this head and shoulders like formation. In August, the market had a rally very similar to this. And AMC so far, so far, if you start this rally, we had a nice pump up. We came down very similar to this pump up. Then we came down and then we broke above it just like how we broke above it here, depending on how high AMC gets to, it might try to keep going, but we could be forming a head and shoulders. This could be the left shoulder, the head could be forming, then the right shoulder could come and we will likely come right back down. I don't know how high she'll go, but I do believe she may have some more room to go. The high cost of borrow is very interesting as well. But anyways, guys, that's what I have for this video. For AMC, could she break crazy high numbers? Yes, but I think it's more likely that she's going to establish a high, maybe between 8 or $9, maybe even higher, who knows. But somewhere near where we are, just a few dollars higher, I do think she's going to establish a high, and I think the market's going to start reversing. And just like what happened in the past, when the market reversed and started coming down, AMC did the same thing. It happened in March. It happened in August. So don't let your emotions get the best of you. That's most likely what's going to happen. I can't guarantee anything because it depends on TA. It depends on like data. It depends on what happens if she does end up squeezing right now. We have to wait and see. Okay. That's basically what the bottom line is. But anyways, guys, I want to thank all of you for listening. Have a great rest of the day and I'll see you guys in the next one. The market to the moon because the long-term future is still very bright and peace out.